Hello students. In this problem we're going to compute the volume of a, uh, another solid surface. Um, I say another because I have um, other videos where I've computed uh, volumes of these solid surfaces. In this case it's going to be uh, an ice cream cone. So we have z is greater than uh, x squared plus y squared and then we take a square root of that so that's the cone here on the bottom and then z will be um, less than uh, the square root of 50 minus x squared minus y squared. If you square both sides, you find out that that is a sphere of radius square root of 50. Um, a sphere of radius square root of 50 there on the uh, top of the ice cream cone. So uh, z is bounded between the top of the ice cream cone, the sphere, and the, um, the cone on the bottom. Uh, I'm going to convert this to cylindrical coordinates. It seems like a natural coordinate system for this type of problem. And um, because uh, we're uh, circulating around um, this uh, uh, sphere here, and even around the cone as we work our way down to the, to the point, um, theta uh, um, ranges between 0 and 2 pi. And then, of course, z is bounded below by the cone and above by the, by the sphere. So those are going to be the natural uh, boundaries uh, presented by the problem. Now we want to compute the volume. So to, we um, take this triple integral, um, where all we have is the volume element, the volume element in there. Um, you could also think of there as being like a 1 in here, but I'm not going to write the 1. That'll be understood. Um, and uh, as I've said in other videos concerning volume, this is the formula for the volume of this uh, solid um, surface. You could think of this as a triple sum of the little volume elements that make up this uh, solid. So you add up all those volume elements and you get the volume of the solid. All right, I'm going to assume that you know that already. Now, uh, to convert this uh, integral to cylindrical coordinates, um, I will um, use the definition for r here. r is the square root of x squared minus y squared, uh, x squared plus y squared, sorry. So z is uh, greater than r and less than uh, the square root of 50 minus r squared. If I factor out the um, minus sign here, I get a plus sign there, and that's an r squared. Okay, so... I have the limits of integration for z, and I have the limits of integration for theta. I'll need the limits of integration for r. So let's uh, set up that um, volume integral. And I have everything set up, except I don't have my limits of integration for r. Um, but that's easy to do, because um, are the points of intersection of the sphere and the cone. So let's go about uh, finding um, those points of intersection. Because once I have those points of intersection, R will range between uh, those distances. Um, so let's set up the algebra for that. Um, so what we have here is um, I want to look for the, the point of intersection of the cone and the sphere. So I'll set R, which is the cone, equal to the equation for the sphere, which is the square root of 50 minus R squared. So I set those equal to each other, and then um, I just square both sides, move the minus r squared over, 2r squared minus 50 equals 0, and then I just, you know, start solving this thing. And I get r is uh, plus or minus 5. So um, now since radius is a positive quantity, that means that r will be bounded between 0 and 5. And I now have my limits of integration for r. Okay, now um, that is the setup for this integral. And this will give us the volume. Um, you can stop here and do the integral on your own, um, or you can uh, keep going. From this point on, I'm just going to describe the uh, integration of um, this quantity here. So um, I'll just do this all at once. So I, I have uh, I rewrite the volume integral here. I have it in cylindrical coordinates here. And um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to integrate with respect to z. So we'll have a z r. And then um, I will uh, substitute in the um, upper and lower limits of integration for z. And uh, we get um, r square root of 50 minus r squared minus r squared. And um, now, you know, I could just employ Fubini's theorem um, and uh, uh, integrate with respect to theta. 
and uh, then integrate with respect to R and uh, I can uh, integrate in either order, doesn't matter. But uh, what I'm going to do is since um, theta is, uh, since R is treated as a constant with respect to theta, I'm just going to factor this integral out. So this will give us a 2 pi here because um, when we integrate d theta um, we just get a theta and then we evaluate that using the fundamental theorem of calculus 2 pi minus 0 um, when I substitute the uh, 2 pi in for theta. Anyways, you get a 2 pi. Um, this integral here, uh, I'm going to use a u substitution. So um, I'm going to let u equal 50 minus r squared and then uh, du is equal to minus 2r dr. And then if I uh, multiply both sides by minus 1 half, um, the uh, r and dr uh, get substituted for minus 1 half du. And then I have the square root of u. And then um, if r is 0, then um, u is uh, 50, and if r is 5, then um, u is uh, 25, and that's how we get uh, these limits of integration here. Okay, so um, then I uh, subtract, uh, if I move my integration, which is linear, to the r squared, um, I'll subtract this integral of r squared. Uh, okay, now these integrations are simple. We know how we got the 2 pi. Um, u to the 1 half, I add 1, I'll have u to the 3 halves, and then I multiply by the reciprocal, 2 thirds, the 2's cancel. I'll soon substitute these in here. What I did was I swapped the limits of integration. When I do that, this sign goes away. Um, integrate the r squared, we get r cubed divided by 3. Um, and now it's just arithmetic. I just substitute these values in using fundamental theorem of calculus and subtract them from each other and I do some arithmetic down here. You can uh, simplify this as you like, but um, that is the result and this gives us the volume of the ice cream cone. Okay, good luck.